بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the Sira class Today inshallah we will discuss the farewell hajj of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And this is the only hajj that he performed after Islam We know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed hajj before Islam But after Islam, this is the only Hajj that he performed. He performed many Umrahs, but regarding Hajj, this is the only Hajj, and it was called the Farewell Hajj, because the next year, shortly after this Hajj, he died. And we talked last time about the previous Hajj that was performed by Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, and we mentioned the reasons why Abu Bakr radiallahu anh led the people instead of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So now, after the Hajj of Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, and after the delegations that came to the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam accepting Islam, after people saw that Islam dominated Arabia, all the tribes accepted Islam, and now it is time for the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam to go for Hajj, and that was on the 25th of the Qada of year 10 of Hijra. It was Saturday. That's what most of the scholars say. In the book, it says it was on the 26th. So there is difference of opinions, whether it was 25th or 26th. But they agreed it was on Saturday. And the Prophet ﷺ took eight days to reach Mecca. Also in the book, it says one week. Imagine, from Mecca, from Medina to Mecca, 280 miles, it takes average of one week. Because of the people that were accompanying the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He reached Dhul Hulayfa, and Dhul Hulayfa is the Miqat, the place where the Muhrim, the one who intends to perform Hajj or Umrah, has to start the rites of Ihram. And that's what the Prophet Sallallahu did. And he performed Ghusl and two Raka. And scholars differed whether these two Raka are recommended in every Miqat or it. It's only for that place. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Atani atim min Rabbi, an angel came telling me to perform prayer in this blessed valley. The valley is the valley of Aqiq, Wadi al Aqiq. And until now, you can see it, Wadi al Aqiq in Medina, it is known until now. So scholars said this is special for Medina. Others said no. Every time you want to perform Hajj from any place, you do the ghusl and you perform Turaka. So after the Prophet وسلم, performed the Turaka and after he started the rituals of Hajj, he moved to Mecca with the companions. The Prophet وسلم, took with him 100 camels to sacrifice. And they had a standard. Whenever someone takes sacrifice with him, the hair is shaved until the blood is coming out. You shave the hair from a specific part of the camel and the blood comes out. This is called Ish'ar. means declaration that it is for Hadi. So no one will attack, no one will touch those camels because they are dedicated for the sacrificing. And the Prophet ﷺ took 100 camels. How many people sacrifice 100 camels? No, when his father sacrificed, that was like, like a uh, ransom for the soul of Abdullah. It was Abdul Muttalib. But people, even now, the rich people, how much they pay for sacrifice? They ask if it's 300 riyals or if it's 100 dollars or more. Imagine 100 camels. That's equivalent approximately to 30,000 dollars. Look at the generosity of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he took the camels with him, and in the way, people used to come and join the Messenger وسلم, until over 100,000 companions were with the Messenger. وسلم. Remember now, a few years back, on the, on the sixth year, how many companions were with the Messenger وسلم, when he went for Hudaybiyah and the Umrah of Hudaybiyah? How many companions? The ones who took the pledge, it was 1,500, less than 1,500. 
Then how many companions were with the Messenger وسلم, in the opening of Mecca? 10,000. Now, how many companions are with the Messenger وسلم, in a matter of only a few years? Why is this? Now, this was not because of jihad, because of da'wah. When Islam was spread and everybody knew about Islam, then they accepted it. Look at the number, how it was multiplied. When they reached Sarf, or Sarif, Sarif, it's a well-known place even until now. The Prophet ﷺ commanded the companions to change their rituals from Quran to Tamattu. We know and we studied this in Fiqh, that we have three types of Hajj. Whether Ifrad, you perform Hajj only, or Tamattu, you perform Umrah, and then you terminate the Ihram, and until the 8th or the 9th of the Hijjah, and you, you do the Hajj, or Quran. Umrah and Hajj, but without Tamattu, you cannot terminate the Ihram. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he performed Quran. Why? Because he took the sacrifice with him. So he could not terminate his Umrah, his Ihram. While the companions, they did not bring any sacrifice with them. They wanted to sacrifice there in Mecca. So he told them, after you finish the Umrah, you perform Tawaf and Sa'i, you terminate the Ihram. And they, they could not believe it. They said, no, we don't want this. How can we terminate the Ihram? And then we go to Mina, we start the Hajj, while we were enjoying. They asked the Prophet Sallallahu what type of hill? He said, everything. You do everything, even sleeping with your wives, even this. So they did not want that. And they looked at him and they said, you will not do it. He said, because I brought the camels with me. Now this issue is discussed in fiqh. And we studied it. We said that there are three types of hajj. But here is the incident, how it happened. That's what we study in the seerah. That's how it happened. At that place in Sarif, the Prophet ﷺ commanded the companions to terminate their umrah, their ihram after they perform the umrah. And then they do the hajj. While he himself, the Prophet ﷺ, he performed the Quran. And Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu, he came and he joined the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Where was Abu Musa before that? Yes, very good. He was in Yemen. He was sent with Mu'adh radiallahu anhu to Yemen. He came and he asked the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa The Prophet sallallahu asked him, what type of hajj do you, are you going to perform? So he told him, I made the intention like the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa the type of the Messenger وسلم, is performing, I want to perform. So the Prophet وسلم, asked him, did you bring the camels? Did you bring the hadi with you, the sacrifice? He said, no. He said, then you do like the other companions. And based on that, scholars differed. What type of hajj is better? Is it ifrad? Is it tamattu? Or is it qiran? And again, this issue is discussed in fiqh. But you need to see all these like incidents, how they happened, how they took place. In fiqh, they are not in sequence. But in sirah, they are in sequence. There is a full hadith, hadith Jabir radiallahu an. It's narrated in the Sunan in Sahih Muslim. Hadith Jabir, it gives you the details of the, um, of the Hajj of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once he reached Mecca, the Prophet sallallahu sallam washed himself, he took a bath, and he entered Mecca, and he entered the Haram. And now he has more than 100,000 people with him. He started from the black stone and he did the seven rounds and he told Umar radiallahu an, Huna tuskabul abarat. Here the, the eyes shed tears, O oh Umar. Here you cry for the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that place. Now we don't know if the Prophet وسلم, remembered what happened to him. Only less than 10 years ago he was alone in that place and he was tortured, he was abused, and companions were killed. Some of them were kicked out of that place. But now he is coming here, and this place is purified, and he has not only few people, but he has more than 100,000 of the companions with him. So the Prophet ﷺ performed the tawaf, which is tawaf al-umrah. He performed a sa'i, and then he remained in Mecca until the 8th of the hijjah on the 8th of the Hijjah, he went to Mina. And he stayed there. 
He prayed Dhuhr and Asr, Maghrib and Isha, and the next day, which is the day of Arafah. The day of Arafah is the ninth of Dhul Hijjah. He moved to Arafah and he prayed Dhuhr and Asr in advance. And behind him was Usama ibn Zayd. He was riding behind the Messenger وسلم, on his camel. Now remember, this is not a regular assembly. This is the biggest gathering that the Prophet وسلم, ever had. More than 100,000 people watching the Messenger وسلم, and they are watching behind him a young man. But there was something also significant about that young man. He was black. He wanted to show the people, not only tell them, that there are no differences whether you are white or black, whether you are rich or poor. If you are a Muslim, that's it. There are no barriers, no walls between us. He did that. And now people, until this very day, they are suffering from discrimination. But the Prophet ﷺ stopped this. Not only by words, but also by actions. Behind him was Usama bin Zayd, riding. So the Prophet ﷺ in Arafah, he gave a very concise, important khutbah. And it is until now valid as a constitution for all mankind. And it is important for us to learn from it. In this khutbah, the Prophet ﷺ said, O oh people, lend me an attentive ear, for I know not whether after this year I shall ever be amongst you again. This is an indication that the Prophet ﷺ was expecting death soon. So he is telling the companions, pay attention to what I'm saying, because I may not be here next year, especially after the ayah was revealed. In that place, the Prophet ﷺ received very important ayah. What ayah was that? Yes, in Surah Al-Ma'idah.